sure, I'd love to help you understand how the eye works. Actually, why don't I show you? First, let's take a look at the outside of the eye. I mean, you got things like the lids, the lashes, brows, I mean, even the eye sockets. They're all designed to help protect the eye. In order to see, light has to travel through the eye. Now, the eye itself is made up of different layers. The first layer that light comes to as it travels through your eye is this clear dome-shaped protective layer called the cornea. Now, this part hurts like crazy if something hits it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. That's because it's the most sensitive part of your whole body. You could think of it as kind of like a windshield for your eye, which would make the eyelids, you got it, your windshield wipers. <laughs> the next layer actually controls how much light gets into your eyes. And it's this colored part. It's called your iris, and it's actually a muscle. Can you guys flex your iris muscle? <laughs> totally kidding. It's an involuntary muscle. It's, uh, it's kind of like your heart. You don't have to think or tell it to move. Unlike other muscles, like, say, your biceps. Those are voluntary. Now, the iris forms around this black dot, or the pupil. Hey, does anybody know what the pupil's made out of? <laughs> well, I couldn't hear your answer, but it was a trick question anyway. The pupil's not made out of anything. It's a hole right in your eye. Whoa! That's how light gets into our eyes so that we can see. The iris forms around the pupil and controls its size to make just the right amount of light come in so that we can see. Hey, let's take a look at the next layer light would come to. So the next thing light comes to is the lens. Now, the lens over here, about the same size as a hubcap. Totally kidding. I just seen who was paying attention. It's actually the size of an M&M. Now, the lens's job is to change size and bend light, get everything into focus that you're looking at, and then send it all the way to the other side of the eye over here, which is the retina. Now, the retina is really cool. It is made up of blood vessels and millions of light-sensitive cells called rods and cones. Now, they're called rods and cones because, well, some look like little rods, and other ones over here kind of look like cones. Now, the cones are made up of three colors. There's red, green, and blue. Now, that's where we see in color, and it's located right in the middle of the retina. Now, rods, they're around the outside part of the retina. They can only see in black and white. That means that your side vision is only in black and white. Have you ever noticed that before? There's one other part right over here. It's called the macula. That's where all of our crisp, clear vision takes place. Now, if this were a real retina, this image right here would actually be upside down. But luckily, we don't see with our eyes, or else, you know, we would all be walking on the ceiling right now, which could be cool. But wait, you're probably thinking, what? We don't see with our eyes? What are we wasting our time with all this for? <laughs> Hold on, let me explain. The eyes just collect information. Then they send it down this little cord over here called the optic nerve. The optic nerve travels around to the back part of your brain, and the brain takes that information and turns it into the images that we see. It also knows to flip that image right side up. Psst, that's how teachers always know what's going on behind them, because they see with the back part of their brain. To recap, the eye is kind of like a video camera. You got this uh, clear dome-shaped layer on the front, uh, and then a lens that focuses the image onto a video card on the back, and then a cable that transmits that video image to a computer or your brain. Hey, don't be afraid to ask if you have any other questions. Hey, good question. For your answer, watch what happens here. How many of you have seen a guy like this before? Using the weed eater, jamming to some tunes, cranking up the chow down on some crabgrass, going out the driveway, when all of a sudden, little pieces of rock and dirt start flying like shrapnel, hitting his ankle like mosquito bites, and then all of a sudden, bam, something hits him right in the eye. He starts kicking himself for not wearing eye protection using a lawn tool, any lawn tool. See, that's why I wear eye protection. I mean, even though I have the reflexes of a bobcat, the speed of a mongoose, I am no match for a weed eater. Why don't we watch that again, but in slow motion? But this time, hey fella, try these.
As you can see, there's no way to react in time when you see something flying towards your eyes. This is the only set of eyes you get. What are you doing to protect them? Hey, another great question. Let's see if the darkness of the lens is the most important thing when you're shopping for sunglasses. Hey man. Hey. I uh, see you're doing a little sunbathing. Um, you're protecting your skin, but what are you doing to protect your eyes? What, your eyes can't get sunburned? Plus, I've got these dark glasses if I need them. Um, hold on one second. Excuse me, sir. Uh, I see you're wearing sunglasses. Do those have UV protection? Of course they do. Why would you wear sunglasses without it? Can I borrow those for a second? Can I just... Hey, you don't whoa, mind if hey. I, I... I got an experiment to do. Why don't you come over here? What I've got is UV sensitive paper that's gonna show the actual damage the sun can do to your skin and your eyes. Let's see what happens. Now, as you can see, the paper has all been damaged by the UV rays except where the UV protectant lens was. Even with UV protection sunglasses, you should never stare at the sun. Exactly. Okay, when you're shopping for sunglasses, there's two things to look for. One, that they have UV protection, and two, and they look good. <laughs> Another great question. But I think it's gonna be easier if I just show you what it's like to have the most common vision disorders for kids your age. Let's start with nearsighted. Nearsighted, or myopia, is when you're sighted for near. So you can see things up close, but you have trouble seeing things far away. So in this case, you can see the ball just fine, but things far away, like your teammates or the goal, could be blurry. Nearsighted happens when the eyeball is a little too long. This causes light rays to focus at a point in front of the retina, rather than directly on its surface. As you can see, glasses push light back to land on the retina, making everything clear. People who are nearsighted often have headaches or eye strain when they're riding in a car or playing sports. Oh, I am so sorry, miss. If you had just gone to the eye doctor, this would have never happened. Now let me show you what being farsighted, or hyperopia, is like. See, it makes close objects blurry and hard to see, but you can see faraway objects just fine. Keep your eyes on your own paper. Farsighted people sometimes have headaches or their eyes get tired when they're reading or doing homework and they often have to keep their finger on the page to remember what line they're on. Hey now, I told you to keep your eyes on your own paper. This happens when light entering the eye falls behind the retina. It's because the eyeball is a little too short in this case. But no worries, a trip to the eye doctor can get you set up with glasses or contacts to fix that. That's a shame. Never would have happened if she'd have just gone to the eye doctor. The symptoms seen here are caused by astigmatism. This is when the cornea is not a smooth, round surface. It's either too flat or too curved or bumpy. This can cause things both near and far to appear blurry. I'm sorry, I just couldn't see you. Hey, zip it. Why didn't you just go to the eye doctor, man? Right. I'll help you. Thank you, you come with me? Man. Whoa, this last disorder could be serious. There are a few things that could cause these symptoms. One of them is called strabismus. It's when your eyes aren't perfectly aligned. If not corrected, this one could mess with your depth perception, cause you to see double, and eventually lead to blindness in one eye. You couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. Oh. Yeah. oh, come on! Why don't you just go to the eye doctor? 